Bom dia, Mr. Dogs, this way, this way. <laughs> Hey, this guy, Jeremy Bentham, was a, was a fucking weirdo. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. He invented this thing called a pan panopsicon. It's a prism. And it's designed so you just need one guard. And all the prisons can be seen in the cells. Um, and there's a, well, the more strictly we are watched, the better we behave. I'm going to come back to this, right? Just try and show you for now. These panopticons. It was, I'm sorry, my signal's just a nightmare. Everything's a nightmare. Yes. Uh, these are panopticon prisms. I can't make it big. What's going on? See, it just needs one guide, but eventually. I reckon you wouldn't even have to need the guard in there because the prisoners knew they were being watched so they didn't know the guard was in or out they'd behave do you understand why? Right? they couldn't see the guard but they know our guard is probably they may be watching it does the job doesn't it? Right, he could be, they could go down in that bit there and still see them all and they couldn't see him so they wouldn't know for sure Oh. Welcome to your view of a cell house, New Illinois State Penitentiary, State Room near Juliet. Well, it was that guy, Jeremy Bentham, who invented the whole concept of them. This guy, his body is in a glass display case at UCL, that's University College London. And I used to go out with a girl whose sister attended that college. So when we used to go around and see her, because I was, I was living in London at the time, when we used to go around and see her, meet her from college, and it was said college then, but uni, and go to students, whatever, we meet her. But um, yeah, I saw that Jeremy Bentham guy in a glass case, but I had no idea who he was. It was in the Glaxo, well, I think it's just called Welcome Industries now, isn't it? It was Glaxo, Smith Klein, and Welcome. A uh, big pharmaceutical company. You'll find that there. It pump all the money into the universities, so they pump out all the doctors who fucking prescribe their medicines and make us all better. <laughs> well, so anyway, you get the idea. Eh? Well, fucking all over the place now. Look at that, that's a nightmare, eh? Nightmare. Well, this guy. Years and years and years later, I read a book by this guy. Called John Twelve Hawks. And, um... These are all quotes out of his books, uh, lines out of his books. And, um, they like dystopian. The one I read was called The Traveller, and it, the first one in um, what they call it when you do a, a trilogy. I've not read the other two. I, I mean, I intend to. It was written in two thousand and five. I read it about two thousand and nine, I think. And um, it, it was a good book, but right, I'll get. I'll, Read your Wikipedia synopsis of it. Well, it's not the synopsis, but it's a quick... It just gives you a feel. The book is set in the near future and lays out a world where the real power lies, not with people or governments, but in the hands of a secret organisation who call themselves the Brethren. 
but who their enemies refer to as the Tabala. The Tabala are a centuries-old secret society who believe in the importance of control and stability, making them essence advocates of a kind of extreme utilitarianism influenced the ideas sorry influenced by the ideas of the philosopher Jeremy Bentham, the guy in the glass case. Utilitarianism who invented the Panopticon. Utili utilitarianism influenced the idea sorry I'm fucking now. Jeremy Bentham. The Tabula wished to enforce a virtual Panopticon a society where all individuals become so accustomed to being watched and monitored that they act at all times as if they were being observed and as such completely controllable. The virtual panopticon is made possible through the use of surveillance cameras, centralised databases, RFID like chips, sorry, like tags for each citizen and assorted spy gear, heat sensors, infrared cameras, x-rays etc, also facial recognition. And it's a big thing in it, and we've got that now. The tabula are a relatively small group, operate largely in secret, but they have great power across the planet, in part by manipulating politicians and other individual organisations, individuals stroke organisation, and in part because of their great wealth and advanced technology, which is in some cases far beyond the technology available to other groups and even governments. The underlying premise for the realms in which the book, this book is set greatly resembles the cosmology of Tibetan Buddhism and other Eastern cosmology. Most notably, the second realm is explicitly labelled the realm of hungry ghosts, but each realm in the enumerated hierarchy is associated with a hu given human shortcoming. Much like in Hinduism and Buddhism, the world we inhabit is the fourth realm and different travellers can visit one or more of the other realms See the book's got like a like it's like a fantasy element to it, with different realms and that. But it could all be true. And when I read it back then, it like seemed like it could be believable then. But now in reading it in two thousand and eighteen, it's fucking, it's right. Everything is more or less not everything, but it's scary. It's f f they have like these um, guys who. These DNA labs and uh, what do they call them when you they lab look bio like bio biometric or biology labs where they're doing all sorts of mad experiments and they're creating um, animals and cross breeding them and making these chimeras or chimeras and they have these like they set I'll give you a quick part of it. Like this guy goes walking back into his flight, he knows he's being looked for, but he goes back to his flight, thinks everything's cool, and he opens his door and there's two of these rabid fucking Camira things, and I can't remember what they are, but there's something like Half Panther and Pitbull, they're, they're a horrible, horrible beast there, a horrible creature, and so he gets ripped to pieces by them, they, they, they use them as well, you know, to catch people, and these things are fucking scurdily horrific. And in 2009, when I was reading it, they was already doing it then. I, you know, one film, I think it's early 90s or maybe late 80s, I'm not quite so sure, but Gremlins 2. And um, <coughs> on the floor of that, there's a DNA lab and all the gremlins go in. So that's how they all boof, get like uh, super like changed. It's hilarious watching, but it's scary thinking about it. Like it's, it just goes mental when they get in the DNA lab, the gremlins, and it's oh, it's crazy. But that is like impossible, isn't it? It, it? Once you start mixing with all that, life is dangerous. That's what makes it interesting. Virtue is admirable, but boring. <laughs> all the news stories were telling me to be frightened. All the commercials were telling me to buy things I didn't need. The message was that people could only be passive victims or consumers. The first icon of the 21st century is the closed circuit surveillance camera. And it is, eh? If privacy had a gravestone, it might read, don't worry, this was for your own good. You go back and have a look at We'll go back to Mr. Bentham, right? Um, the 
Panopticum Penitentiary from Greek and was based upon an idea of Jeremy's younger brother Samuel who while working in Russia for Prince Potemkin hit upon the central inspection principle which would facilitate the training and supervision of unskilled workers by experienced craftsmen. Jeremy came to adapt this principle for his proposed prison and inspection house envisaged as a circular building with the prisoner's cells arranged around the outer wall and the central point dominated by an inspection tower. It resembles an eye, doesn't it? The all-seeing eye. Does an eye, well, does to me. See, that's why. Why that Jonathan 12 walks look what is well not this walk up walk up I it's panopticon watching so I just thought I'd share that with you I'll see if we can get any images of that Jeremy Benton in his glass case there's some mad story about some students stole his head for a while and fucked about with it, so it's an official head, I think. Not quite sure of the details, but it's a mad story. When I saw it, there was straw sticking out of it and all, like a fucking guy fox. <laughs> I touched it and that, I stuck down through a thing and touched it. <laughs> but anyway, I'll see if I can get, and I think you can get pictures of it. Yeah, I just thought I'd share it because it's it, when you look, it's more and more what society is becoming like. Like they're gonna cash his way in it with all these cash. It's gonna be well. That's it, that's it. I think. So a lot of people are using cards more and more. So, and then every time you walk out on the street, there's cameras, you know, all over the place. Facial recognition at airports, you won't be up too long. Well, you probably got it on a lot of cameras already. In Glasgow, all the bus stops are mic'd up. Um, it is becoming a panopticon. Well, oh, that's in the, the display case. That's a. Whatever. Fucking noise. Oh, my signal's gone. I apologise. Oh, it's an artificial head. It's a white one. Yeah, I reached and touched it. It's fucking minging the thing. Oh, it's all tatty and that. They've made that and just stuck it on. Fucking creepy or what? Him fucking back in the day. Aye, oh, oh, sorry, it's like a wooden case with a glass thing on front, not a glass panel. I can't remember now, but I managed to fucking touch it. There was a gap and it was open, I can't quite remember the fucking details, but I touched it. Keep your fucker in so uh, you got his younger brother to thank for inspiring that cunt. Giving us a fucking... Oh no, I went all down to him, I suppose. But I like the spin, I'll show you the spin on it here. He's done it, he says it the other way. He says it should be like, we, the people, can watch the government. <laughs> it's never gonna happen, is it? Apparently, in 2012, Deadline Hollywood announced that Warner Brothers acquired film rights to the fourth round trilogy. I didn't know that. I had no idea. They've made an album as well, inspired by the first book, Traveller. I'm just getting the bits and bits of a wiki. Well, where's it gone? It 
again. In fact, Bentham's ideal state would have been a panopticon in reverse. <laughs> Rather than officials being able to watch the people, Bentham wanted open and accountable government in which the people watched and commented upon the actions of the officials. Furthermore, it was arguably the failure of the British government to honour its commitment to build the panopticon that propelled Bentham into political radicalism and into producing a detailed and comprehensive onslaught of the political, legal and religious establishments of the country. Back to 1790s. Well, while expecting one panopticon prison to be built, Bentham proposed housing several hundred thousand people receiving poor relief in 250 panopticon industry houses where they would be obliged to work in return for relief. Fucking modern day slavery. Well, not even just slavery. Outright, out and out slavery. In return for relief. So, work, uh, fucking, and eat, uh, don't work and die. Same as today, we've got it. Elements of his proposals ignored at the time re resurfaced in the new poor law of 1834. What? Elements of his proposals ignored at the time, right, were res resurfaced in the new poor law of 1834. The Panopticon has in recent times received a great deal of interest, in large part due to Michael Foucault's identification of it as the paradigm of the modern state which watches its citizens, gathers information about them, and thereby exercises power over them. Ain't that the truth? Hey, I'm going to leave it there, then, see this uploads, and then I'll come back to it.